Welcome to Mama Tales, a podcast on our collective motherhood journey. I'm your host, Sally Kuria. Before we start this episode, I want to put out a disclaimer. If you want to get queasy, consider this a warning for what's coming ahead. In my line of work, I get to hear a lot of motherhood stories. But I have to admit, I haven't heard of any experience that has been similar to the story I'm going to be sharing with you now. In this episode, we will listen to Frida, a mom who suffered one of the worst cases of breast engorgement that I've ever had. Here's a bit of what's coming up. The doctor just, he didn't even touch my breast, he just saw it. This one needs an admission. <laughs> Me, I was shocked. I had gotten an infection through the nipple crack, and that infection had had become excess sequin and pressed my breast so bad with uh, with a warm warm towel and uh, my husband was I, I know that day he 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 really did feel it for me because I scramped. You know the nurse was not feeling any pity. I didn't know that I'd end up in a theater cause of engorgement. So that story is coming up in a bit, but before we get there, I want to share a comment from one of our listeners from Spotify um, that was left after the previous episode, as well as the highlight of the week, this little nugget of time where we look back at the past week to moments that brought us joy. It's always amazing reading comments or thoughts that you have after listening to an episode. They really go a long way in helping me understand the impact of the stories that are shared here. This week, Mukuhei said that Gina's episode was so insightful. She goes on to write, I am raising my littles in a really unstable environment. And this has given me something to think about. In her episode, Gina talks about experiencing emotional neglect because of the unstable home that she was raised in. And I think that really allowed a lot of us to think critically about the home we are raising our own kids in. Thanks for sharing that with us, and I do hope that you'll be able to sort it out in the best way that you can. My highlight this week will be really quick. I believe last week I mentioned that I'll be hosting an event um, on co-parenting with a family lawyer, Ivy Katungu. She featured on episode 48 during the Holiday Survival Guide. Well, this past week, we have received over 800 registrations for the event. And those registrations came with over 700 questions that we need to tackle during the event. To say that I'm overwhelmed is a huge understatement, but in a good way. Never in a million years would I ever think that 800 people would sign up for this. I mean, to be honest, I was definitely reaching out for 40. (laughs) But it does show you the power of networks. A big thanks has to go to Murugi Muni, one of the hosts of the TMI podcast. She really pushed a lot of our followers my way, so I'm very grateful to be able to open up this platform to all of you. I am busy at work trying to make sure that the event goes on without a hitch and proves to be very beneficial to all that need this information. If you haven't registered yet, please do. This is a virtual event taking place on the 1st of February that will dig deep into co-parenting, child maintenance, and everything that comes with shared custody. Registering is one of the best ways to ensure that you do not miss out on it. So head on over to the link in the show notes of this episode to register, or you can even just go check out the website. That's mamatilspodcast.com slash events for more. If you have a highlight to share, please let me know. There is a form attached in the show notes. And you can also tell me what you think about an episode, share your thoughts about it, and any ideas that you had when you're listening to it, when you listen to this podcast on Spotify Mobile. All right, let's dig into Frida's story. A quick heads up, she had her son with her when we recorded, which is always welcome. I love seeing or hearing babies when I record and our connection wasn't the best. So some words are muffled, but I did try my best to make it work and clean it up. My advice, listen to it with headphones and listen to it all at once. When her firstborn girl turned eight, Frida felt like this was the right time to have another baby. Her daughter had already started asking questions because all her friends wondered why she did not have a sibling. Frida also knew that she wasn't getting any younger. So they decided to try for another child and she got pregnant. Uh, One thing I'd say is please don't wait for that long because the body tends to forget. It it was okay, but there were challenges. 
mostly I was tired, I was fatigued, and everything seemed strange to me because I'm a bit older. It it uh it took a toll on me in terms of tired, being tired. But she pushed through, and soon it was time to deliver her son. This delivery was very different from her first, and this was something she was not prepared for. She had had her daughter vaginally, but she ended up needing an emergency C-section for her son. So what happened, I, I, was, I was late. This day where you give birth is called the due date. Due date. My due date, I was late. That day, I I. I I wasn't feeling my child. I was I could not feel him as I did before these other days. So I had to go to the hospital and just to be safe because I've had stories where your your child is not moving the way they're supposed to move and it doesn't end well. And I, I went to uh was taken straight to the scan, scan and after being scanned, um I was told that my center is old. It's not providing enough nutrients and oxygen for the child. That's why he has movement and I needed an induction. Yeah, so admitted um, and I was to be induced late that night at 12 a.m. Uh, fast forward the next day, uh, contractions had not started. I remember his dad uh, coming in the morning and we... We walked around the hospital for like two hours. My for patients to come, they still didn't come. They checked the heartbeat. Uh, it was very slow that I had to be sent again for another scan. The heartbeat was there, but uh, from far. So, uh, let's wait. Let's give it a few more hours, like an hour or so, and then if nothing else happens, we are going to. Uh, put you at the second uh, it, it's a tablet immediately after that let's say like after 30 minutes my waters broke and we had to check and it turned out that he had pooped he had pooped and it's understandable because you see this child is already tired I, I didn't believe it when they told me no this means yes so they they told me okay you go back to your room once you see the green, the green thing, the green substance that we are seeing, you no, know, they asked, "Are you seeing the green sub substance?" I think you have to confirm, so that you don't go to them and say that they, they talked things that are not for them to operate on. So they had to ask. Me. I said, "I, I, I am not seeing any green thing. I'm just seeing brown." So I was to look. You go back to your room. Once you see green, you come and tell us. Uh, I didn't even reach. I I I, I already started. You know the tires are white, so the water has been dripping, and as it, as it drips, I I see now. Yeah, this is actually green. Once she confirmed that she saw the meconium, the nurses started to prepare her for her surgery. She panicked, watching all those tubes go inside her, nurses running around, papers being brought to her to sign, all while enduring never-ending contractions for a child who doesn't need them to get out. Eventually, she had her surgery and her baby was born. I've gotten my child and I've stayed for four days in hospital, as it should be, and I'm back home. Um, so now we start dealing with breastfeeding. As I said, I, I know, I, I've never had a problem with a uh, low supply of milk. So... My milk uh, started coming so much of it, and the baby is small, so he could he could not finish the milk. I got nipple crack on that particular boob. I don't know if the latching was the problem. So, I is it? I think after five days, that's when my boob started swelling. Me thought it was milk that was a lot. It was milk because I remember I pumped a lot. The pain didn't go away. So um, me, I thought uh, if, if I tackle this problem the same way I tackled last time eight years ago, I'll be fine. That is where I went wrong. I didn't seek uh, medical attention. With her first baby, oversupply was an issue. She was producing more milk than her body could handle, but a few home remedies seemed to solve it. She thought the same remedies would work this time too. Uh, so... 
with with warm with a warm compression where you you dip a towel, a small towel in hot water and then you compress uh you press with warm a warm compressed yeah that, that that is how i think that's how everyone does it so that's what i used to do and i did that uh one two three I think for the, the pain will not go away and I'd keep doing that, keep doing that. So I, I just wish I, I went to the hospital instead of treating myself. In spite of the pain, she had to continue feeding her son, all while hoping the warm compresses would offer her some relief eventually. Yes, I had to breastfeed because if you don't breastfeed, the milk keeps coming. You know, the milk will keep coming and it won't stop. And the more the milk comes down, the pain, the more the pain. It was, okay. remember I have a nipple crack? Uh, no, remember now I'm engorged. So the pain was unbearable, but I had, and this, this baby's latch, they latch on like a leech. <laughs> so I remember I, I'd tell everyone in the room, do not look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> so I'd prepare. And tell everyone, please look away before last because oh my god, that pain. It was but now you see I'd I'd hesitate to feed him, feed him on that breast. I'd mostly feed him on this other one that was better. That's that's another actually I didn't get to a point. I I I don't know what was wrong with me, but I knew I'd put myself and I'd get well because uh, there's this day, now I decided to take antibiotics. Uh, flux, fluxoxacillin, that's what it's called. And yeah, it does help. Now meat was too late for me. Those Even those ones could not help. So uh, it got worse that I had to go to hospital. It, now I, I reached that two weeks um, appointment where, where now for the baby to be checked and the mother uh, after my baby was checked, now I, I talked about the engorgement. The doctor just, he didn't even touch my breast. He just saw it. This one needs an admission. <laughs> Me, I was shocked. I've, I've gone to the to, to just this two-week normal clinic. I thought they'll just tell me, uh, prescribe some more medicine. I was told now uh, this one means an admission and not even an admission of, of one day or two five days five days why because i had to be given the that the antibiotics uh, iv because now only those ones would work i had gotten an infection through the nipple crack and that infection had had become excess only that kind of treatment will help i broke down at the doctor's office now they start again putting me more needle, <laughs> needles I cried because I'm like, I'm not going home. I have a two week old. I'm going back to the hospital to the ward. Like, what's again? How? As in, yeah, I was told by the doctor that after those five days, the infection will go down. They, I had to get admitted with him because he was, he was two weeks old. He was very small. No one else would have managed to take care of him. I had not found milk because me, I didn't know that somewhere I was going to be needed to be away from. So yeah, so I, I get admitted. I'm still not believing it. Again, um, his dad uh, comes around with whatever I need. And I remember him back in my bag and I'm just there quiet and with teary eyes. Because I couldn't imagine one, two, three, four, five days. I knew I'm still in pain. The pain has not gone away. It's, it's still there. This whole time, even while I was bending, because even it's, I'm swollen. So I'm bending. I'm looking at other people and, and you know, like mostly moms. And I'm like, are you, are you happy or not in pain? I wish I could be you. Now, um, the first day, uh, they'd come and give me antibiotics thrice a day where putting that medicine through your veins, the pain because you, you know, they, they, they'd put um, in the morning, in the evening, 
and they are pushing it through your vein. It reached a point, vein got bruised, they had to change and, and now put the injection on, on another side. Breastfeeding the baby was hard because of that needle. Uh, it would be painful putting the, you know, you'd feel the medicine going through the vein. So it was also traumatic. And uh, let me tell you what was frustrating yeah. is that um, the pain was not going away. So I'd call, I'd call uh, my close family, and I'd cry on the phone, and and I'm like, I, um, what's going on? I'm still in pain. I'm not in there. Remember now, three times at is it three or four, four times, four times already. I've been done. Uh, they'd wake me up even at five. Pain is still there. The second day, I was frustrated to the core. Because there is no improvement, and I came here to be given this medicine, and I'm getting worse. You know, the third day, yeah, the third day now, um, I complained. I remember I I called his dad, and I, I cried, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Come to the hospital, tell them something. It's either that, or I just get out of this hospital, and I, and I just go where they'll work they'll, they'll, they'll treat me so uh, he came he came uh, with them with his cousin and I, and I remember the, I, I even had them uh, uh, complaining and asking why, why is there no improvement what's happening then the nurses were like she should compress herself and I, I can't I just couldn't yeah uh, so they they talked to the head nurse. Um, and that's when the head nurse came. <laughs> she came and pressed my breast so bad with, uh, with a warm, warm towel. And um, I, I know that day he, he, he really did feel it for me because I scramped. You know, the nurse was not feeling any pity. I scramped. But again, I think I'm thankful for that because if she didn't do that, I, I, an, abscess, uh, an abscess would not have formed because after that, that's when now I formed an abscess. There was a, a depression. You know, she has removed, there's bad milk and all that. She has removed. So now what remained is the where the infection had now uh, stabilized and, and that's where the now the abscess so actually the the medicine was working the antibiotics were working just that i've seen it because the antibiotics are the ones that um that the ones that caused the i think they were pushing the infection out but now the infection was too much that it just couldn't disappear yeah so i remember one not after the nurse saw that um she she was like uh let let me let, let's talk tomorrow i think she knew it was a surgery but she didn't tell me <laughs> but so she was like uh watch her let's let's see yeah so i slept i slept with the problem again the next day again the, the pain is still there the pain is normally still there my mom was there my husband was there and uh we were told that now i need i need to be now there need to be done a surgery on me. I, I feel like this is information that I, I don't know why people don't talk about this. I didn't know that I'd end up in a theatre cause of engorgement. I feel sad that it's not talked about enough. And, that, and, and now this one leads to people to such kind of, of things. Because if I went earlier to the hospital and if I took those antibiotics earlier, I would not have gotten there because let me tell you, after surgery, I still got another <laughs> infection. <laughs> the same. But now I knew better when I went. I'd have gotten another surgery again. Yeah, so um, I remember the nurses, they toured me. They were like, oh, my God. They came, they, they asked, isn't, it, isn't there any other way that this, this can be done? Because we've had a lady who was here and remember my mom saying please don't listen to them because everyone's different because me they were 
making me super scared. They're like, is it? Now, as you are waiting for the surgeon to come and check on me, that's when she, the head nurse is like, isn't there any other way? Frida, have you tried to compress properly? Because we normally don't want it to reach to an extent where you're having a surgery because we have seen the experience. There's a lady who came here. She was uh, she was cut both, both, both breasts. It reached a point we had to tell her to stop breastfeeding now and just use formula. Uh, you have to go through dressing. Because the dressing part is what was scaring me the most <laughs> because I can't even... They were like, and then you have to be washed inside, put things... Me, I was so scared. But I do want to know. And then my mom was encouraging me so much. She was like, uh, you'd rather go this and not go through the pain that you already you had seen. So me, I didn't... I, I, it was like... I was scared, but I didn't mind because as long as the pain goes away, because at that point, that's the pain you even, you don't wish anyone on that, for anyone that kind of pain. That makes you even wonder where am I living? <laughs> because, wow. Uh, so, Dr. Kanina comes in and he says, Frida, hi, how are you? Let's see. Uh, then he, he he saw and he asked for a new, uh, a needle um, with a syringe to show us what what exactly he's going to remove. He was, I didn't feel the pain. He removed pus and showed us, showed uh, my husband, my mom, do you see? Do you see? This is very bad. This requires emergency and this requires surgery without a doubt. So uh, we were told you pay this amount upfront then we don't eat anything for two hours. I'd not even eaten, but yeah, I don't to eat anything. So I was ready for surgery in the next two hours. Now, now I'm waiting for surgery. I couldn't have to ring in there. Then I'm called after another two hours, and then they, they, they fixed formula for him so that he can have um, I'm in the theater room. It was a traumatizing part for me where I was told I was given a general <clears throat> anesthesia. Yeah, I didn't want it because how am I going to sleep? What if I don't wake up? Why? And I remember signing so many things because of that. So, and then I was dressed into theater clothes. My son was left with my mom and his dad in the my room where I was. And I remember walking while I was crying. Again, I'm crying while I'm asking the nurse, what if I don't wake up? <laughs> they were able to calm her down, put her under, and perform the surgery. The surgery itself took two hours, but it felt like minutes for Frida, who was knocked out. She came to in the recovery room and felt a huge bandage on her breast. When I woke up, they called my name, Frida. Uh, you okay? They asked me a few questions to see if I'm ready to be taken to the ward. Yeah, so uh, now I went, I met again my mom, my husband, my son. They were waiting for me. Yeah, and I remember them asking me, hi, how are you feeling? I was just feeling like I'm drunk, like, you know, lightheaded. But the pain was gone. Here comes now the, the another challenge is the healing. So, yeah, I'm left with my baby. I remember seeing my baby's head so big. <laughs> yeah, even go, I remember staggering while going to the toilet and I'm like, how will I manage alone? But I did because they had to go home. The next day, the surgeon uh, wasn't there, and so I had to stay in the hospital. But they had to dress me. There's no the, here comes the dressing. Oh my gosh, they they don't uh, seal that wound, you know that, and you remain with an open wound, and that open wound is as deep as your index finger, even double the size of your index finger. That's how deep. It is. And now, what's supposed to happen is. The uh, flesh is supposed to grow from there. Fresh flesh. Fresh flesh. Yes, you can see. But me, I refuse to look. The people who so tell me, they tell now tell me, my husband tells me it was as deep as a salt shake. <laughs> I wish I had it. <laughs> yeah, so I remember going for dressing immediately after that. It was, oh gosh, it was traumatic. It was traumatizing. 
they pour saline inside and then they take a gauze, they wipe inside now the wound and then put a gauze inside, then uh, dress you. So you stay with a gauze. That gauze is, is there to absorb any more pass left. Yes, and now breastfeeding again was hard, 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 hard. And guess what? Milk also comes out from that hole. Yeah, so now I was um, released uh, from hospital the next day. And I was told, now you go, look for somewhere trustworthy, clean place where you'll be going for dressing daily. Until after two, one week, where now you'll be going on alternate days. So I went home and now the sign law came and I remember uh, going for dressing with her for a whole week and she was so supportive. I have to mention her. You know, she pinch pinch my leg so that I don't feel because the first week is also, it's also, it's not easy. And you're being washed. I'm telling you, they're washing you like three times and th then they remove, they remove the gauze that was there first. Then they wash you and then they put another clean gauze. Then they dress you. So uh, the first week was, she, she offered me support. She, she pinch, pinch my legs, sing to me so that I don't, my mind does not only go elsewhere. God is gracious because I didn't have complications with my CS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did but yeah, of course I'm still uh, recovering in, in the normal ways where I can't uh, overwork and all that. So um, I I found a good uh, hospital where I go. It was near home. Mind you, you you you're spending you also spending money daily. Yeah. So I went on like that, like that. It became easier, but uh, the most challenging part again was meal. From that wound. So whenever I'm, I'm breastfeeding my baby, I'd make sure I place it so that he doesn't get wet from the milk. Also, yes, that. So you had to go, you had to go for the dressing because if you don't go again, uh, the milk, you know, when milk goes bad, it turns into bacteria. It used to be, and most of the milk from that side will go through the wound. So the baby. <laughs> The baby would mostly get full from one side. It's God that he's this big because I didn't use formula at all. Me, I was like, no, because I have the milk, I'll continue. But now from this other side, milk will, now that's, I, I think it's creepy. I don't know. It, milk just coming up well on the side. <laughs> the fact that she was able to breastfeed from the breast that went to the surgery was crazy to me. And that milk was coming out of the wound. That was even crazier. But her doctor gave her the go-ahead to breastfeed right after the surgery. The surgeon told me I'm now good enough. To, I can now breastfeed him on that side. So the first week was bad because there's a gauze there. You know the gauze in, is inside and you can feel it when you touch. <coughs> so I had to go for dressing until that hole closes up. It took three months. <coughs> yes. Yes, it took me three months for the hole to close. And that is what made me go for dressing for three months. Because as I said, I have an open... And the hole is closing slowly, slowly, because they can't use uh, medicine to make it uh, close fast because I'm breastfeeding. Yeah, so it took its time. And there's no way I'd stop going for dressing while the milk is leaking. Because as long as the open, that means there's an opening of which I told you I got an infection. <laughs> I went to the hospital soon enough and I was treated. And now after I was treated, now the hole closed up. The hole closed up and uh, finally I now stopped going for dressing and, and now everything is, is, is well, but I've, I've learned what I've learned. I want to thank Frida for taking the time to share her story with us. She is a baker, a content creator, and a mom to an eight-year-old girl and a six-month-old baby boy. 
she really really wanted to share her story and raise awareness about the dangers of ignoring breast engorgement some of the symptoms to look out for that could be a sign of an infection is shivering and severe pain from that breast please please do not ignore the signs if the idea of milk coming out of an open wound on your breast is not scary enough i don't know what will be remember we are having our first event of the year on february 1st this is specifically tailored to co-parents so if you're one or you know of one who might benefit from this session please point them to the registration form in the show notes of this episode if you'd like to support this show the best way you can do that is to share this episode or any other that you enjoyed with a friend or two if you want to take your support even further consider making a monetary donation Think about it like buying me a nice hot steak pie from Java to Munch on as I head on over to produce these episodes and deliver them to you for free every single week. Every small bit helps. Next week, we join a mom on her journey of self-discovery. See you then. Bye.